And the next special Christmas film treat on BBC One is at 8.45 when Warren Oates stars as the one-eyed Rooster Cogburn, made famous by John Wayne in True Grit, A Further Adventure. And you can see that at 8.45 tonight. <laughs> A variety of programmes to entertain on Boxing Day on BBC One. At seven o'clock in Are You Being Served, it's young Mr Grace's birthday party. The note we start on to sing happy birthday to you. Have you got it? Yes, we have. And the suspense is carrying on. <laughs> Then at 7.30, the final round in the competition for the Mastermind Trophy, introduced by Magnus Magnuson. They have these, uh, they have these places, don't they? At five past eight, the two Ronnies. Places? Yeah, you know, you've heard of the erosive zones, haven't you? <laughs> at nine o'clock, the French Connection. Gene Hackman stars as Jimmy Popeye Doyle, a New York cop on an obsessive hunt for a narcotics gang. At 10.40, last of the summer wine. Nobody's going to be visiting us. The last visitor I had were a bloke from the gas board looking for a leak. <laughs> yeah, well, I can quite understand I'd mistake your place for a public convenience. <laughs> and at 10 past 11, Norman Wisdom is among the guests on Boxing Night at the Mill. <laughs> a whole Boxing Day evening's entertainment on BBC One. In five minutes, Christmas Night Entertainment continues with some more misadventures of Frank and Betty Spencer in Some Mothers Do Have Em, starring Michael Crawford. But before that, there's the Christmas Evening News with Peter Woods. The time now is exactly 11 minutes past seven. In two rescue operations off the east coast of Scotland, 20 seamen have been saved. In storm force winds during the night, two ships ran into trouble. The coast of Ferndyke went aground off the Firth of Tay, and RAF helicopters joined Broughty Ferry lifeboat to rescue the eight crew. Two lifeboatmen who were injured are recovering in hospital, but the freighter's captain had both arms broken. In the other incident, the Swedish cargo vessel Alstern sank east of St Abbs Head. The 12 crew were eventually picked up and landed at Leith this afternoon by the British cargo ship Lundy Shore. Several other ships, as well as two helicopters and an RAF Nimrod, had been involved in the search 120 miles out in the North Sea. The 12 Swedish seamen were exhausted but unharmed, apart from two with minor injuries. Their ship sank in minutes after its cargo of wood shifted, and they'd spent more than five hours adrift in a leaking life raft. Tonight, they're having Christmas dinner at an Edinburgh hotel. The Queen has taken faith in the future as the theme of her Christmas message and illustrated it with recordings of her father and grandfather and pictures of her grandson. She asked the nation and the Commonwealth not to switch off hope for a better tomorrow. The Queen attended morning service at Windsor, along with the Queen Mother and other members of the royal family. In her Christmas broadcast on radio and television, the Queen stressed how one generation held its experience in trust for the next. And the broadcast ended with pictures of Princess Anne and her son Peter, now 13 months old, joining the Queen in the nursery of Buckingham Palace. <laughs> the broadcast can be seen again on BBC Two at a quarter past seven. At Canterbury Cathedral, worshippers at the Christmas morning service were led by the Archbishop of Canterbury. In his message, Dr. Coggan said Christians shouldn't so overemphasize the importance of the next world as to despise the joys and ignore the horrors of this life. For Christ, there was no choice, he said. He threw himself into the sorrows of his fellow men. In Rome, Pope John Paul II delivered his blessing.
In his first message to the city and the world, he encouraged all people to work to improve the quality of human life. And finally, he wished them a happy Christmas. Ancora una volta, buon Natale! Travers on London's buses and tubes got official free rides today for the first time. London Transport, who are committed to providing a skeleton service over Christmas, say their offer was a seasonal gesture. Hundreds took advantage of the concession, which was available for unlimited travel on selected routes between 9.30 and 3.30. The gesture will cost London Transport around £13,000 in lost fares, but it did mean that transport workers like ticket collectors and booking clerks had the day off. The travelling public made good use of the free services, so everyone seemed happy with the arrangement. And that's it for now. I hope you enjoy the rest of Christmas evening. And Her Majesty the Queen's broadcast to the Commonwealth is now about to start on BBC Two. Now look at uh, the Boxing Day weather. England, Wales and Northern Ireland are expected to have intervals of fairly bright weather, though bands of cloud and rain will move northwards across most areas during the day. Much of Scotland will stay cloudy with rain at times and snow on the northern hills. Temperatures, like today, will range from a rather cold 3 degrees centigrade, 37 degrees Fahrenheit over northern Scotland to 7 degrees centigrade in the north of England and as high as 11 degrees centigrade, 52 degrees Fahrenheit in parts of the south. And that's the weather for Boxing Day. Later tonight on BBC One, Michael Parkinson. My Christmas show features that marvellous form of seasonal entertainment, pantomime. And taking us on a magical mystery tour of British institutions like the pantomime dame, the pantomime cow, the Chinese policeman, the broker's men, the demon king, the good fairy and the principal boy, our experts like Arthur Askey, Les Dawson, Little and Large, Charlie Caroli, Stan Stennett, Laurie Lupino Lane and Pat Kirkwood, to mention but a few. Join me at the pantomime this Christmas and guess who I'll be playing. Parkinson will be at the pantomime at 10.30 tonight on BBC One. And now our evening feast of entertainment begins. In 45 minutes, the Mike Yarwood Christmas show, but before that, Michael Crawford in Some Others Do Have em. <laughs>